Well, hello there, motherfuckers, and well, the ease the tension here in the YWC. Been a lot of negativity as lately. I'm gonna do a good old retro review. NWO sold out 1997. Now this is a WCW pay per view, but you know they made like it was an NWO pay per view because the NWO was fucking over as all shit at this time, and they were just awesome at this point. You know. It was the shirts, the leather jackets, the big names, Hulk Hogan, Kevin Ash, Scott Hall, you know, and they were recruiting a shitload of guys, and, you know, the NWO was getting, they were getting massive. Um, so what they decided to do is make, like, the NWO was taking over completely, that they got their own fucking uh, pay-per-view, and the set was awesome. The, the the ring just looked so cool. The NWO logo right there in the middle. All these TV sets that said NWO at the entryway. Um, so, you know, this the, the pay-per-view environment gets a 10. I mean, it, it just it looked great. However, the pay-per-view itself... <laughs> horrible shit. Let's review it. So we've got our announcers. It's it's Kevin, Nett, um, excuse me, Eric Bischoff, and um, Ted DiBiase, the Million Dollar Man. Now I can see Eric Bischoff, Ted DiBiase. Um, they did an all right job, I suppose. But you know, I don't. Know. But anyway, um, we got our first match. It's uh, Masahiro Chono defeating Chris Jericho. Um, I, you know, not an amazing match or anything, but uh, it was decent enough. Uh, I'll give it three stars. It was all right for an opener. Slow in some parts, but, you know, the, a variety of moves. And uh, I thought it was pretty decent. A good way to start off the show. Um, then you had Big Bubba Rogers defeating Hugh Morris in a Mexican death match. And, and, the, and, and Bubba um, was Big Boss Man, what, what, what a dumb name in WCW. But uh, this was a, you know, calling it a death match was a bit extreme. Basically, it was a last man standing match, Mexican death match. I, when I hear death match, I think of, you know, the fireworks, the barbed wire and everything. You know, um, but, you know, this wasn't really like that. I mean, it was okay. They, they did some hardcore stuff. Hugh Morris gets on top of the steps on the entryway and does, um, well, I think he was going for a moonsault or something. And then the got boss man gets on the motorcycle and he rams into him. And, um, you know, and then they, they count to ten and it's over. Uh, you know, it wasn't horrible or anything, but, you know, not good and definitely not a death match. Uh, I'll give it, like, two stars. I mean, it was all right, you know, uh, two big guys going at it, um, you know, but, like I said, it didn't feel like a death match. It, it felt more just like a normal, like, you know, no disqualification match or, you know, something like that. Then you had um, Jeff Jarrett defeating uh, um, Mr. Wall Street, Mike Wall Street. That's the IRS, motherfuckers. That's who it is. Um, it was a very boring match, to say the fucking least. <laughs> to say the least. Nothing fucking happened. Rest holds up the ass. Just a fucking shit-ass match, you know. Um, it was just... You know, the, the NWO, this was also the problem. They, they, they had too many guys in there that didn't deserve to be in there. Did Mike Rotunda really have to be in there? Was he really that cool that he needed to be in there? No. You know, this was the thing. At one point, there was too many guys in the NWO. Way too fucking many. You know, too many jobbers. You know, not that I don't like IRS. Guys got talent, but, you know... They didn't really fit the whole NWO persona. He's not a badass or anything. And this match wasn't badass. It was boring. Um, you had um, 
Stevie Mongo McMichael came in at the end to help out Jarrett, hitting him with a with a briefcase. Uh, I was just fucking bored to fucking shit during this match. I give it a quarter of a star. Then it was Buff Bagwell defeating uh, Scotty Riggs. It wasn't terrible, but it wasn't good either. And, you know, once again, the jobbers here, you know, um, uh, Scotty Riggs. You know, come on now. This guy would end up, you know, going into the, uh, into the flock and they would just end up calling him Riggs. Bagwell wasn't really the big star yet, but they were building him up there. Um, I give it two stars. You know, some of the action was okay, but for the most part, it was pretty boring, and they really didn't do too much to really speak about. Then it was Scott Norton defeating uh, DDP um, by count out, and, you know, this match was... Um, you know, it was all right. I guess you have to take into consideration that DDP, half this match was everybody getting in the ring. Buff Bagwell was offering DDP the shirt. He put the shirt on. And then, you know, they were doing this for fucking years in WCW, which was getting a little bit annoying. And they had already done it on a previous Nitro before this even happened. And then I remember they would do it in 1998. They kept on offering DDP, hey, you want to be in the NWO? Yeah, fuck, everybody else is. But, you know, um, DDP starts, you know, fighting everybody and escapes through the crowd. Uh, you know, for everything involved in it, you know, I guess uh, it's kind of hard to rate this match. I, I give it like a star and a half, maybe. <laughs> You know, it, um, you know, you had a little bit of action in there, and then you know everybody just gets in the ring and not too good. They would just repeat this shit with DDP getting an offer to join NWO a thousand fucking times in a row. Then you had the Steiner brothers defeating um, the Outsiders um, with some help of a of a WCW referee. Uh, counting the pin. Basically, the Steiner brothers got their asses kicked during this match, and then just at the end, um, they had a flurry, and you know, and, and they managed to get the win. I give it the like two stars. You know, it was all right. It wasn't horrible or anything, but it was just mostly the outsiders beating the Steiner brothers down, and them just getting the win at the end. Um, very Hulk Hogan-ish, if I, if I could say. Um, yeah, uh, not too good. I, you know, I really expected more from this match. Then you had uh, Eddie Guerrero defeating Six in a ladder match. And this was a good match. Um, really, this was the only real standout match on the card. Uh, you know, it wasn't... Um, it wasn't boring or anything. It was exciting. You know, not really one of the best ladder matches, but it was pretty fucking good, I think. You know, enough, like, little spots in there to keep it entertaining. I give it three and a half stars. Um, you know, six and Eddie Guerrero worked well together. Um, and for the most part, a pretty enjoyable ladder match. Uh, then you had the main event. It was Hulk Hogan... And uh, he fought the giant to a no contest. And this, this was boring. This was horrible. What a shit ass main event, and it didn't even have a fucking finish. A main event on a pay per view that led to no finish. Now, I know back then pay per views only cost $30. You know, but here's the thing still paying good money. Good fucking money just to see a, a, a fucking show just have a miserable fucking ending like that. How horrible it was this? This was just a fucking disgusting disgrace of a main event. You know, Hogan and the Giant just, you know, barely even moving in there. Just, you know, really just a, a miserable display of, of main event wrestling. Just terrible. Fucking terrible. 
And, uh, you know, they spray paint the giant at the end and, you know, basically another fucking repeat. Another fucking repeat. You know, and that's um, honestly uh, why the NW ended up dying. It started to get really repetitive. So a lot of times they would do new things to, you know, breathe new life into it, but they would really just keep repeating the same fucking shit. Spray paint, you know, um, a little promo in the ring, a beat down, same shit over and over. I love the NWO, but, you know, this whole pay-per-view exposed how just fucking, you know, the NWO was too much at times. Also, I want to add that during this event, they had the uh, Miss NWO contest. And I don't know if this was a joke, but they didn't make it funny. It was supposed to be um, serious, I think. It was all a bunch of really ugly biker women. That was the theme, that all of these girls were biker girls, biker chicks. But they were all ugly. A lot of them quite fat to boot. And, uh, you know, there was only, like, two that could be considered somewhat attractive. And, like, the ugliest one of the bunch ends up winning. And they and then Eric Bischoff kisses her on the fucking mouth. And I was just flabbergasted by this. And uh, then they sit her down. They give her the sash that says Miss NWO. And they sit her down on a fucking toilet. I am not making this up. This <laughs> this was their beauty pageant. This was a fucking disgrace. Some of the women were so fucking old they couldn't even hear. Um, they had the whatever the fuck his name was there, and he was talking to all the girls, and some of them couldn't even hear what the fuck he was saying because they had hearing problems. This pay per view was a fucking disgrace. It was terrible. It was fucking horrible. I give it a 3 out of 10, not even a, you know, a very good ladder match could save it, um, you know, and it wasn't even like that ladder match was incredible or anything, it was just, you know, it was an alright match, but that's about it, um, everything else was just fucking terrible, alright motherfuckers, that's been your retro review, not a very good pay-per-view, I, I promise next time I'll review a better pay-per-view, but, uh, yeah, I wanted to watch this one. I heard a lot of things about it. I wanted to see how it was. Boy, oh boy, it was terrible. <laughs> All right.